Good. Okay. Good uh, morning. Uh, welcome, councillors and staff, to the August Planning Environment Committee meeting agenda. And um, we pay our respects to the traditional owners of this place, both past, present, and emerging. And today we have five items on the agenda, of which three have been asked to be referred to the general committee, but we will. Uh, go through each of those items to see if there's any further information or questions that might be relevant to be answered here. So item one is for a material change of use, uh, for a development application for a material change of use, I just said that, for visitor accommodation, type three, at 500 slash 90 Beach Road, Noosa North Shore. Now this is one of the ones that has been requested by myself uh, because of the significance of the matter and the community interest to go to general committee, but do we have any questions or Further information that you'd like from staff. Um, as a surfer, you know, people, that's, there's a lot of interest around you know, that, you know, the, the community. So uh, I went to the to that property, and after reading this very, very closely, um, I I'm, it, I think it complies with with the rules, um, and I, I I don't think it, I don't think I can support council in this way. Because the uh, council, you appear to be debating the point, yeah, which is what we're going to do next time. Monday. Yeah, uh, is there any further information you require? Uh, should there be a um, should to, to, to justify your position or further information to clarify your position, as in being contrary to what you've read in the staff report? What other information would you need, or is there anything else you'd, you'd need before Monday? Uh, no. But I recommend going to the place and having a look at it. I've got a question. Um, I was a bit confused about the detached um, dwelling, the house. So it says it sleeps up to 12 people, but it's only a two bedroom dwelling. Can you tell me a bit more about that? So the application was lodged for a two bedroom dwelling last year yeah. um, through a number of meetings that we've had with the applicant and the owner. They've come in in June, I believe, with a proposal to limit the number of people that go to the site being to a maximum of 12 um, so that's where that numbers come from so they're saying that they would fit a maximum of 12 in the dwelling but they haven't changed the plans to increase the bedrooms or anything like that. How many that. bathrooms do they have? Two. Uh, three. I think there's one on the ground floor too. Mm. Okay. So there's no planning scheme requirements that would limit the number of people, you know, to yeah. only sleep in a bedroom, for yeah. instance. Mm. I'm just confused at what it's actually going to be used for. Mm. That's the, the purpose well, is confusing. Yeah. To me, it goes to the veracity of the application in some respects. That you know, they've got 12 people, but it's a two-bedroom unit. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, that's what I, I, I'm sort of. Yeah, that's what I, I, there was sort of some inconsistency from mm. reading the report that yep. I. Now the lagoon pool, um, I mean I read about that it was going to take 300 trucks and a huge amount of you know, effort to build it. How long would that take? Like, What would be the impact for the ferry system? And We're not sure. They, not too much information has been given on the actual construction of the lagoon. <laughs> the, the applications really focus more on the actual building. Um, so they haven't actually given us the plans for the specific lagoon that they're planning on building and they haven't lodged any operational works application to give us an understanding of what kind of work is actually required to construct the mm. lagoon and how long it will actually take. Yeah, so um, sure. we can ask the applicant how long they estimate it may take. Yeah, thank you. And we can try and uh, work out how long we think it would take for 300 trucks to go over the ferry. Yeah. So we'll come back to you yeah. with some estimates, I guess, on that. Yeah, and I, and I guess then the question of 300 trucks using the ferry, what's the impact on the, our local residents? Yeah. That's a big question. Yeah, yeah, well, what officers are saying, it's an impact on the ferry services potentially, but also people living along that route. Yeah. On that yeah. issue, can I just, because I'm curious, the, the suggestion is that it's a freshwater pool, but there appeared to be an alternative option to pump out of the river at another location. Would that then make it a saltwater pool? Um, unless they plan to treat it in some way. Okay. Hmm. Councillor? Just, I'd like to have more information on, on how uh, this is likely to adversely impact on the amenity of visitors and residents on the Noosa North Shore. 
Yeah, so um, what officers are saying it has potential to impact on the route to fill, fill the um, lagoon up initially, but also to continue to top up the lagoon over time. Um, so there's been two proposals put, well, three proposals put forward. One is potentially letting it fill by rainfall. Um, calculations show that would take over a year to fill. Um, the other option the applicant has put forward is from a property on the Noosa North Shore to pump from the river and then truck the water back to the lagoon. So the impacts there are about um, um, uh, residents living on the route and having those vehicles which they wouldn't expect to have um, on that route. The other concern is because we don't know what type of um, system it is, it's difficult to fully assess um, any noise impacts from the equipment used to operate the lagoon itself and the wave action. So there's proposals to put some of the equipment underground, which sounds like a good option in terms of mitigating impacts, um, but there's um, uh, some you know, limited certainty as to what it is because they haven't actually chosen the type of wave park yet. Okay. So just in terms of the construction, the sound, and they're saying they're going to dig it down five metres and it's within, uh, I forgot to check the map, is it under five metre AHD at the top of that yes. It may be for next week to come prepared to explain what the potential hazard of disturbing acid sulfate soil is. Council Wilkie? Um, the report mentions that it's a complex with the planning scheme has been refused because it involves a clearing of 1.24 hectares of certain species habitat of high value regrowth vegetation. Could you also um, provide information about what species are involved there, please? Um, yeah, I, I like that information if possible. Mm -hmm. We we're certainly into that for you. Um, um, the site is mapped as koala habitat by the state, yeah. so I'd expect the species is predominantly koala food trees. Yes. Um, but we can look at whether there's any other species there that might be impacted. Uh, there is a section lower down where it explains uh, mm. it is what we know as scribbly gum, bloodwood, and in the lower areas, blue gum. Um, there's also then going into the wetlands where you have the swamp crayfish and other species there associated with the wetland system. So the threatened species relates to the, the, uh, the flora as well as the fauna? Yes. Oh, mm, no, I wouldn't go that far. The, I don't think that it may be worthwhile checking. Because it's regrowth, mm. it, won't, um, it won't necessarily have a, a biodiversity status. Yeah. So, so I'd just like to know if it's fauna so, or... Yeah, Connor has advised that the, the ecosystem there is habitat for threatened species and this is reflected in the classification under the planning scheme, the environmental protection classification under the NUSA plan, and uh, including glossy black cockatoos, koalas, wallum froglet and swamp crayfish. Yeah. So um, he's suggesting potentially it's both flora and fauna. Thank you. Um, just to uh, clarify, ancillary use because the proposal does not constitute, constitute constitute an ancillary use and so it, it seems to to me that um, from my looking at it, what an ancillary use is that this is an ancillary, it's just it, it's a pool it, it it there's lots of pools over there on the north shore already it's just a slightly bigger pool with a pump on one end but i don't I, it, it, it's it's making it look like that it's going to be a tourist attraction and that the house is just a small part of this actual the pool is actually the tourist attraction is that is that right that the thinking behind it or the, the way that the way that council is seeing it uh, well council officers are seeing it that it's not ancillary because of the scale of the pool and the potential impacts it brings it will also be the main attractor to the site people aren't going to necessarily go there for the accommodation they're more likely to go there because the offering of the wave park on site so it's not ancillary in any way, being the main attractor. If it was a, a swimming pool, a typical swimming pool, I would call that ancillary. But a wave park such as proposed, that is how big? 4,000 4, square metres is not consider ancillary given the impacts it will have. So in old terminology, people listing 4,000 square metres is about one acre? One acre, yeah. 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 So it's a sizable, sizable pool. 
So we would, we would suggest to the applicant that, and we have done, that they should have made the application for the accommodation as well as for the wave park itself. Um, and the wave park, they, um, you know, through this application, they're suggesting that the only people staying on site will attend the wave park. That could have formed part of their proposal. It does not make it a separate, not a separate use. So it's still a separate use defined by the scheme. I have a technical one for you. Um, obviously, the report was ostensibly written before the 31st of July, but it's published after the 31st of July. Um, and I think it may be worthwhile coming up with an extra uh, note for the motion about uh, reference to the Noosa plan, unless otherwise noted is a reference to the superseded planning scheme. Because all the discussion um, it infers that we're talking about the planning scheme in force at the time we're reading this report, and that's not the case. So I think for correctness, we need to make it's pretty obvious when you look at the discussion, but just for correctness, in case it goes to appeal, we make it really clear that we that reference to the NUS plan refers to the superseded scheme when we, under which this application was made. Okay, uh, so you would like a note in the sort of motion, if you like? Yeah, I think just an extra clause in the just motion. Just a note, and make it clear for everybody. Yep. I've got a question, Kerry. Um, on page 15 um, of the report, it says the su subject site is identified as one of only five dedicated undeveloped visitor accommodation sites left in Noosa North Shore, and only one of two sites specifically dedicated to low impact visitor accommodation. So my, my, I guess my question is, what's the opportunity cost? Like if we didn't do this, and this is only going to house, have two bedrooms and, and 12 people, what does this site have the potential for revisitors? <laughs> What potential is left if this development was to proceed? No, no. Instead of? Instead of. What else is available? Okay. Is that, is that no, the question? No, no, no. So, yeah, so this is a tourism site. Correct. So if this particular development can go ahead, but a, if it was fully developed as a tourism yeah. facility, what would be the carrying capacity of a fully developed tourism facility? Oh, on this site. On this Bearing site. in mind that it's yeah. only one of five. It's an opportunity cost question. Yeah. yeah. It's an opportunity cost question. Yeah. 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 So maybe Monday, because you did mention the previous approval that lapsed. Yeah. And whether that's still going to be yeah. a, a, achievable under the current koala mapping. Yeah. Look, um, the current new, oh, sorry, the superseded scheme, the 2006 scheme, <laughs> <laughs> got to get used to this, um, allowed uh, yeah, the acceptable solutions for up to six cabins on this site. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, given the development that occurred next door, um, if that someone had come forward with more than six, we would have support, um, likely supported it if they could show that it wasn't going to have any environmental impacts. Um, with the commencement of the new planning regulations and new mapping around the site for koala habitat, which happened in February, um, that obviously uh, quite um, puts a number of constraints on this site. Um, because a lot of the site now is mapped as both priority area and koala habitat and any development proposed in where it's mapped both koala priority area and koala habitat would be prohibited. The application could not be lodged. Um, notwithstanding, and I can send some mapping around so councillors can see, there are areas of the site that are only mapped as priority area, uh, limited areas, where some cabins could be located on the site. Um, and look, cabins are typically around 100 square metres, not the size of the dwelling that's proposed. Um, so I would expect, um, it's difficult to know, but unless we got some measurements on it, but probably up to six could still fit on the site because uh, there are some exemptions under the koala habitat regulations for clearing bushfire and um, up to 500 square metres for other matters. So under the superseded scheme, the one that we're looking at, yep. um, we could, yeah, they could get up to about six cabins. That's the probable solution. They could come in with a performance outcome and try and suggest that they could achieve more on the site. Okay. Um, and given what's occurred next door, I think they would have some good grounds to put that forward if they could show they met the environmental requirements for the site. Thank you. Okay, so that's all the questions on that one. I'll just going to query about the... Um, do you mind? You may. Yeah. Yeah, it's just about the um, body corporate and their submission in relation to whether or not they need to consent to whether it's common property or not. Um, and if I understand correctly, we had advice on a similar issue, but not exactly this issue previously, that said that that was a matter for the body corporate 
yeah. effectively, and, and they would need to determine that it wasn't a role for councils. Yeah. Like understanding that when I read the report. Yeah, so there's two things at play here. There's the body corporate uh, community management statement and whether this compro proposal complies with that community management statement and requirements in there. The other aspect is whether they require owner's consent under the Planning Act. And the advice that we've had previously was um, whether is a material change of use proposed of the common property. Um, so the common property for this one is the access easement through to the site. Um, which was always envisaged for access and obviously carried amount of traffic um, that was previously approved with the original development. So the thinking is that there is no material change of use of the common property, common property yeah. and so therefore um, body corporate's consent is not required. Um, so that was tested on, it's not quite the same situation, but was test, tested with the Beach Road Holiday Homes yeah. in court um, by the body corporate there um, who weren't successful. Um, so I've tried to explain the difference to them between the Planning Act requirements and the body corporate requirements are different matters. So maybe in breach of their, their bylaws, but there's nothing we can consider. In yeah, that. that's right. Yeah. Okay, so moving on, on to item two. Oh, we need to make a recommendation that be referred <laughs> to General Committee and Council Wegner moved that and Council Stewart seconded. All in favour? And if you'd like to do so, by your voice, please. Put a hand up. I saw it put a hand up on mine. <laughs> Did you? Oh, there you go. There she goes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're now up to item two, which Thanks is up. the report on the climate change response plan, which has also been requested to go to the general committee because of the significance of the matter. But do we have any requests for further information or questions at this point in time? I, I do. Um, just, hi Rebecca. Hi. Um, just in regard to um, talking about consultation with the community and the stakeholders, um, on page 53 it says um, the plan will be prepared in consultation with appropriate representative members of the community. Um, and then we go, we look at sort of who that is. And in our matrix at the back it says the high impact, high level of interest will be um, the, this is all fine. Yep. We'll, yep. The, yep, will be the um, property owners in coastal hazard areas. Uh, will they have an opportunity to be engaged specifically and part of those stakeholder reference groups? Yeah, there'll be a number of consultation processes going on at around, around the same time. The planning to have direct engagement with properties that are affected by uh, coastal erosion, coastal hazards. Um, as well as broader consultation around other climate related impacts as well. So that'll be an important part of the consultation will, will be that direct engagement as well as other stakeholder engagement with community groups and resident groups, business associations. So, is that good? Having just looked Thank at you. that graph, can you come prepared on Monday to be berated? about why you would think that youth between 13 and 20 have a low level of interest. Actually, that's... <laughs> that's, that's what I got picked up on is, is, yeah, the community education programs. And um, for I know what it does. Just become prepared. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They've made it to the consultation plan and I think that's an important step mm. <laughs> that we should make efforts to engage with them and that's why they're there. And then I would suggest um, Dahlia with uh, the eHub. Yeah, you know, we'll work with her on that one because she seems to be the most engaged in that area. She's doing some great work. Yep. I've got another question, Rebecca. In the household and communities, who are the key stakeholder um, stakeholders for the target of consultation on page 62? Um, we've got residential tenancies authority, aged care facilities, Prisian Beach Community Association and council community development team. How did, I mean, is there room there to add additional, I um, mean, you know, um, groups or ha how did that sort of group come about for households and communities? Yeah, I think this was a first pass assessment of the obvious ones that came to mind in developing the project plan and the consultation plan, but others will come, come along as we put more thinking around it and as we have uh, that stakeholder engagement as the first part of um, developing up the plan. 
that I think a lot of those groups will, will pop up and as we engage internally as well to see uh, what other staff are dealing with different community groups and individuals. So it's not fixed is what you're saying? It's yeah. not so it's fixed. A it, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and what I would say is it's absolutely an inclusive, you know, whoever needs to be engaged and wants to be engaged will be engaged. Yeah. So, you know, if we need to put some statement around the report, the kind of catch-all around that, yeah. Um, to acknowledge that, then we could do that too. It's, it's, it's not supposed to be, this is in concrete and that's yeah. the only in groups. Yeah. You know, it's, this is this is shire-wide, yeah. community-wide, impact, impacts everyone in some way. So, you know, we'll be, we'll be looking to engage as many groups, people, you know, that we can. Right, because yeah, under households and communities, it would be good to, especially those people who will, you know, who are the high impact, high level of interest who have been yeah. sort of flagged here to include them in that group yeah. um, just just as a note because they're the ones who I think are going to be the ones who are going to take a real interest mm. yeah, yeah. And have a lot to say. Mm. We could provide a further report with some amendments to that if you wanted both. I, I think the answer if it's flexible you probably don't yeah. need to. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That yeah. I you. think it would be an important role of the PCG group as well that will be advising on the process to be able to assist with workshopping uh, and, and inclusive, inclusive arrangements around consultation as well. Yeah. So it's certainly not, not fixed in any way. We'll keep brainstorming that and reaching yeah. out to, to different areas of the community. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thank you. Do you might surf clubs them. would be good to be involved. Sorry, Brian. Yeah. Surf clubs would be very good to be involved in that too. Yeah, absolutely. Pritchie yeah. and Noosa, Sunshine. Mm. Property yeah. owners in coastal hazard areas. Property owners in bushfire hazard areas. Mm. Highly engaged. Oh, you're interested. Hmm. Can I make a comment instead of a question? Well, I did say you might as well. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is really um, the first project as far as um, Democracy in Action, which is a program starting for us new councillors, how it actually works with the consult, you know, putting out the plan, then putting it out for consultation, coming back again. And so this is just really the blueprint isn't it, that you're moving forward with. Yeah. And so, yeah, so you're, you're forming the community groups and you're asking which, which community yeah. groups would go to it. And I find that to be just really exciting to be a part of this and actually watch it all unfold in front of us because it is exciting uh, to see how this works. Mm. Yep. Yep. Okay, so would you like to move the motion that we refer it to the General Committee for further yeah. discussion due to the significance? All in favour? Unanimously, it was carried. Uh, the next one is a planning appeal, which uh, councillor asked to go to the general committee as well. Is there any further information required for that one? I'm not really sure what the reason for that. I was going to try to contact uh, councillor O'Neill this morning just to check on that. But um, if there is anything, I'll check between now and Monday about whether she needs any more information. Okay. So I'm happy to move that that goes to the general committee. Just for further consideration. For further consideration? Yes. Seconded. All in favour? Carried unanimously. So we then go to item four, which is the development assessment fees and charges variations for the 1st of January. So for the councillors, this is just a report on the decisions made under delegation and gives us the, the requests and the reasons uh, for the decision. Is there any questions on these? Um, with removing the dam wall, it says um, there was significant envir environmental disturbance um, and were carried out without development approval. What sort of significant disturbance was there? Uh, was that just more water going downstream? Or? Oh, I understand erosion mostly, but I might have to clarify for you, uh, Councillor Tom, if I come back on that one. No, no, good job. Well, okay. Yeah, but yeah, mostly erosion is my understanding. But I could ask some more details from the officers. I'd just like to highlight and uh, acknowledge the role of staff uh, giving a free application to the house that was significantly damaged in the recent bridge and bushfire. Um, I think that's a very worthwhile reason not to charge is the, the disaster that inflicted that community and that particular property owner. Just a query for you there. Kerry or Kim, are you seeing an increase in the number of applications for reductions or exemptions since COVID's come in? Has there been a change in 
that type of thing? Um, we have certainly had uh, some people put forward requests for a reduction in fees because of COVID. Um, so I wouldn't say, uh, you know, a handful. Yeah, okay. Uh, so not a, not a lot. Mm. Um, so uh, the advice that officers have given is that, you know, that's not what council resolved when they set the fees um, in, in June and July. Um, and that the fees are set to cover council's costs in assessing the application. Um, and otherwise, the, that cost would have to come from ratepayers. We have seen a number of people take up the deferral of the infrastructure charges. Um, yeah, people are certainly doing that. What did take for that? This is one of the COVID response initiatives. Okay, so would someone like to move the staff recommendation? I will. Move Councillor Stewart, second Councillor Wigner. All in favour? Carried unanimously. And then we move on to the last item of business, which is the quarterly report from the Environment Sustainable Development Department. Um, we may just go through these. If I... Um, we, we do these reports every quarter from each of the departments, and there's one on the agenda this morning, and I think there's four this afternoon. And this format's been in place for, you know, I'm guessing, three or four years, perhaps. And um, in fact, there's something, I don't know if you remember, there's something that the council stock got raised in a couple of months. Is, you know, is this report format still working for councillors? What can be improved? So as we go through, if there's things to think about whether we can improve how we do this, um, the way it's structured at the moment is really about you know, what we've done in the last three months, what we're doing now, what's coming up. Um, but to a large extent, it's really about actions and what mm. we're doing as opposed to outcomes and what we're achieving or, you know, whether we've got KPI trends or whatever it might be. And we just want to have a look at how we can improve this quarterly reporting to Council to, uh, A, to keep you informed about what the organisation's up to at an, at an operational level, but also perhaps to, well, two things. One, one is to look at the format, about whether or not we can have a better format to make the information more readable and accessible, but also to probably understand the impact of what we're doing as opposed just to what we're doing. And you know, that might take, take us into more KPIs and graphs or tie back better into what we're trying to do within our corporate and operational plans and things like that. So just as we go through both today's meeting and we've got the same this afternoon, if you've got any feedback on that, um, Kerry Fontini is going to read that project for us just to have a look at how we can improve our reporting. I'm sure she's watching live online now, so <laughs> she'll take any notes. Um, but yeah, just, as well as the content today, just think about the format and how we can do better. Okay, so I'll just read them and just if you can indicate um, if you'd like any further information. So COVID-19 business support response, Noosa Plan 2020, Tourism Noosa Collaboration, Carby Carby engagement. Right. Um, on the next quarter, it says uh, the very bottom, working with Carby Carby on cultural training for NUSA staff. Uh, what is the program for that? Um, so we've been talking uh, for some time to um, do some updated cultural awareness training, and that we would engage with Carby 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 to deliver that with us. So we haven't designed that program yet Tom but it is a, it is around cultural awareness so it might be that we're we're out on site we go through the cultural Her the cultural act the requirements of reporting those sorts of things oh, Tom, we did mm. something about oh, two to three years ago was it before your time Can't yeah it was before my time it hasn't yeah. happened since I've been yeah, here about three years ago we ran sessions uh, I think it was Kerry Jones came in and did sessions about Kari Kari Club history and culture for all the staff to get them to help understand uh, where they're coming from and that was really well received by a lot of the staff to help their understanding of local Indigenous is issues and history and, the, and, and yeah, it was fabulous. Yeah, well, you know, you, 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 you can invite the councillors. Absolutely. <laughs> definitely no worries. Yep, it would be great. Three cups of tea. Yeah. <laughs> okay, social and community housing and it suggests in the next quarter are you going to hold a workshop for councillors on this issue? Is that next week or the week after? <laughs> that is in the next quarter, Councillor Stockwell. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
So we're very aware, and there's a lot of activity happening in this space at the moment. Um, so you know, very aware of this being at you know one of the top priorities for for council um, and for staff actually. Um, and the new, new Noosa plan now sets a great framework to achieve some some outcomes here. So we're you know very committed to try and get trying to get those outcomes. So um, I know you know myself and Kerry Contini will be really keen to to have this session with you in the, in the coming weeks. Months, quarter. <laughs> when you... soon, as we can, soon as we can lock it in. <laughs> <laughs> right answer at the end. <laughs> when, when you said staff and council, yep. What is the, what, where is the separation between the two? In terms of, what do you mean, Tom? In terms of this issue? Yeah. In terms of what you can do and what we can do? Uh, yeah. What you just said. Uh, when it comes to community housing, because yeah. I, I can see Brian and, and, and councillors, you know, pushing that way. Yep. And of course, probably the, the CEO and, and you know the, the the top end and yourself. But would you be in the council side of that? Would you be in the staff side of that? I think we're aligned on this one. Yeah. <laughs> one of the issues the council's got to address in community social and community housing is. What's our role as an organisation? So yeah. you might recall really early on in your, when we first did the inductions with the council, so through that triangle, you know, our role might be advocacy, which is not, you know, to, to say to the state government, you need to do X, Y, and Z, or the Commonwealth government. Well, the next one down, what we might be, um, uh, I'll give some examples, might take a partnership, or we might put in some resources or some something and get someone else to put in some, whether it's state or coast of Bay, whatever it might be, and do a project together. You know, it might be that we take a, an absolute role with ourselves. We might be the regulator to create more social housing through the planning scheme, to create opportunities for the market to fill that need. You know, we might be a do, we might build it and own it and operate it ourselves. We have all those different options that we have to be able to achieve that. And the policy question to council is how deep do we want to go down that? And the further down we go there, the more resources we need to put in. And the question is whether we're then stepping into state obligations or not. The question is, as we go through it, where do we sit? Do we sit as a an advocate and, and don't take a hands-on role, do we sit as a partner, do we sit as a regulator, do we sit as a do you know, all of that thing. Um, I, I think there's pretty strong views amongst the staff and the councillors that there is a, a real significant issue with um, social and community housing availability in Noosa and affordability and we need to do something about it. The question we've got to work through is how, what's the best way to do that, what's the most effective way using community resources, which is rates, to do that. Yeah. And um, that last, okay, that sort of answers the question, but no, I suppose if I can do it, yeah, our role from councillors is we have to set the policy guidance yeah. as to where we want staff to sit on that hierarchy of different in interventions. Right. So that's what the workshop would do. Here's all the different options. Here's the that's right in front of yeah. us. What does council think is the best thing for this community for the level of involvement, the yeah. level of investment? And the future direction in terms of partnership versus just sitting up the top versus yeah. coming and there, to be a social housing provider. There may be a role of, across a number of those, mm. um, and you know, councils clearly one of the key um, drivers and outcomes sought um, for in the new NUSA plan is is more diverse housing, smaller housing, more affordable housing, more social and community housing. So the policy framework in terms of the planning scheme and, and regulation is there. But uh, as you know, just having it in a planning scheme is not going to deliver it. Yeah. So it, it requires, you know, a, a whole range of other initiatives, including partnering, advocacy, you know, brokering arrangements, all those sorts of things to try and achieve these outcomes. Yeah. Okay. So that that answers actually. Thank you for that. That answers my question. I, I was looking at the difference between you know staff and council is it as wrongly. Um, so then uh, with um, the new Junction, is that with that. The social housing element where the where the where the gold bolts club was mm -hmm. is what's happening there. Is that is that just kind of moving along? So um, we're we're in early discussions with the coals with coals around that site. Now the planning scheme's in, and they've got clarity around what the vision for that site is. So they've started preparing their development um, uh, approach and applications for that site. We've had a couple of meetings, so that's progressing. Um, they will look to. Um, probably break up the site first, so do a subdivision um, to get some larger blocks and then look to the residential component, which we're hoping to get some 
community housing and smaller housing on. The difference is though, Tom, in the uh, first draft and in the second draft of the funding scheme, which went to the state for final interest check, we could mandate the level of social housing in that uh, residential development on the coal site. Um, the state government took that out at the final state interest check. So anything we can do now is really by negotiation rather than man mandating what the requirement is yeah. on that particular site. And at both on that site and also at the Noosa Civic site, they were the two sites where we had specific upzoning, for want of a better phrase, mm. in, in terms of capacity for residential in exchange for a requirement to have um, a mandate social housing. But as I said, the state took that component out, which is quite disappointing. And the state has actually made public briefings uh, to the minister informing that topic. And what I found very interesting was that the briefing did not refer directly to the state interest in our planning scheme. Um, and I think, therefore, the next time we go to negotiate with the state, we should raise that as an issue that we, as councillors, are very unhappy about. Should we pound the table later? <laughs> Sorry, Brian, what are you unhappy about? The, it may not have been the only briefing, but the briefing that was, I have been seen that was made public uh, to the Minister on that issue raised issues which I believe did not raise a matter of state interest, but a value proposition of uh, maybe the person writing the brief, um, but it certainly did not um, uh, have a planning response, in my opinion, that was based on a state interest in planning. So a local government planning scheme. Um, I may be wrong, but it looked like that to me. Okay, so we'll move on. Um, private land conservation partnerships. Just let the website update um, to better inform people on the VCA plan program. There seems to be, um, you know, people. I, I have two friends. You know that have that have bought big properties and they're just they're so excited about this. So mm -hmm. it's exciting that I'm sure that, um, of course, I, I'm I'm worthless to talk to about it, but I try. If you go to the website, <laughs> and that's really exciting that that website because I think that there are a lot of people yeah. you know, under under the radar coming in saying yeah they want to be a part yeah, of that. Yeah, it's a really it's a really positive and popular program. So the more we can communicate about it, the better. Um, we're going to be getting some stories through to um, Coms and Ken also to get some more you know, promotion out there about all the, you know, incredible work that these landholders doing under this program. You got 18, 18 new sign-ups in the last quarter. Yep. Right. Yeah. And I note um, in the last quarter, compiling a final list of split zone properties for incorporation in the next planning scheme now. So that's when um, landowners who may not reach the benchmark for a nature refuge can voluntarily offer their property to be split zone. So we have a planning um, control via a biodiversity overlay over a piece of remnant that might have high local values. Is that That's right? correct. And people can still do that? Yes, they can. So it's still open to do that before the next planning scheme amendment that we may have all these people voluntarily um, wanting to see their, their nice bit of bush down the back or up the front as protected um, for its biodiversity. Yeah, it, yeah. the split signing now forms one of our suite of offers, I guess, around protection. So um, Dave Burr is definitely, you know, providing that opportunity for people and people are opting in for it if it meets the criteria. Very good. So we'll move on to Community Bushland Care Program. A new group around Yellow Belly for the sake of history. That was the first project that Bill Moran ever did for land care. It was the hmm. first stage of the Yellow Belly rehabilitation. Um, where do we go to now? Your ringtail project. Anything more to update? I've actually got a meeting in the transition committee next week. Um, next week, yeah. Can I think? Yeah, next um, So that's coming up, so we'll get all the parties together and talk about how that's progressing. Um, I think I reported last month that the, the, the amazing thing for me is that the regrowth out there is exceeding all expectations, so it's good. Um, with the Euro Ringtail Koala Survey, um, I know that the bias fear 
did uh, that 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 work a while ago. Yeah. There's, I think they're still putting together the uh, the final report on that the, the meeting of everybody of all the different uh, stakeholders with the koalas. Is that is are you using that or looking at that? Yeah, Peter Milne, who's the environment officer, was managing us as aware of that work and mm -hmm. was actually involved in part of that originally. So he's using that as part of the baseline as well. And from memory, that's going to be drone based using infrared technology or yeah, some sort of spectrum part, yep. analysis to yep. identify where the koalas are? That's correct. Yep. Very efficient way to do it. Okay, so the next is pest management plan. Um, okay, got a new one Mexican bean tree in Pomona. Is that where the mariachi is playing the bean <laughs> <laughs> What is it? Well, we'll talk about that later, but back to the bean tree. Hmm. Uh, environmental grants, Noosa River Plan. Yeah, I've got a question about that one. Yeah. Um, with the um, Kim under um, current priorities, developing a term of reference for stakeholder engagement group, um, are we engaging further with um, additional groups in regard to that stakeholder reference group? Um, additional stakeholders um, who may not have had the opportunity sort of around December, January, to oh, to sorry, yes. In yeah. terms of the next, completing the, the plan? Yes. Yes, we are. Yes, so we're, we're, we're reconnecting with all the submitters, um, uh, users of the river, commercial. Um, yes, we are in, in finalising the plan. We have that, that, final, that terms of reference for the stakeholder group hasn't been final yet. Yeah. Um, but yes, the intention is to do that before we finish this, the, the river plan. Okay, yeah. thanks. Okay. Uh, the Nature Conservancy partnership uh, bring back the fish. I've got a question too for Kim. Kim, where are we with the permits on that? Um, I'd, I'd have to come back to you on that to get the, the latest uh, about where we are. Um, yeah. The technical advisory group meet again, I think, next Thursday. Yeah. Um, so uh, on the agenda for that is high on the agenda is the, um, the permits and the approvals process. Um, the last report I had, which was during the last council meeting, we had discussing um, the project implementation plan uh, was that each of the agencies had outlined the um, uh, technical work and reports that requ were required to be submitted um, before formally submitting for the approvals. So uh, we're in the process, the um, TNC are in the process of preparing all those technical reports. That's the last information I got, but that was a couple of weeks ago, so I can get a bit of an update. Thank you. Um, but I, I, I suspect that the um, until the technical reference group, the, t the TAG, uh, will be talking about it in the, in the next meeting based on the draft agenda I've seen. The, the stakeholder group that we've initiated, have we got people for that yet? Or is Craig still talking no, to Yeah, not yet. Yeah. Claire, that's still in development. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Can, can we make recommendations uh, from council? Can anybody make recommendations for people to, for that group? Sure, you can refer names on absolutely if you, if if you want people to be considered in that group. That yeah, there'll be a process around that, but you can provide names, Tom. No worries. And isn't the CEO isn't Brett going to do that? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. His ballpark. Yeah. It is. How many people will be on that group? Do you think? Um, I think we talked about seven, yeah. Five I seven. think in the report said five to seven. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Bushland Reserve Management. Sorry, the peer review, the independent scientific review of the project implementation plan is underway. Yep. Oh, who's so, doing that? Oh, gee, you're going to ask me that, Tom. Sorry, uh, I can't. I can't a scientist? Recall. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is a scientist, <laughs> experienced her, um, and I'm sorry, I don't have the name at hand, but I could provide you that. Not great to live her. Don't start with her. Could be. Okay. Uh, so we, we've got Bushland Reserve Management, Noosa Trail Network. Is there anything else we know? <laughs> I guess we're just enjoying asking questions. Um, the community... <laughs> Wait till we get to the hard questions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the community reference group for the delivery, is that? Um, do, do, do the, next, the next step is to develop yeah. a community reference group. Yeah. Yeah. That's another one of the reference groups. Required. It is, yeah. Um, we are in the process of doing a planning with Tourism Noosa, a hinterland roadshow around a range of yeah. um, initiatives, and this project's one of one of them. So as part of that, we'll be kind of scouting around, you know, interest in, in being part of the community reference group as well. 
um, there's clearly a high level of interest in this trials master plan and the master plan process was um, engaged a lot of people in a lot of groups um, so um, yeah there's, there's 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 quite a few people interested in being part of part of that group which hasn't been finalized yet Tom. Can I, I suggest one thing I noted there was it probably should sit, sit under the purview of the cycling walking strategy reference group too to to actually embed the community helping to select the rights community members as well. For so, sure, they're working. We're, we've been working with infrastructure team on, it. on that yeah. as well. So. Yeah. Just on that, I, um, I suspect that what I call the rivers of gold, which are coming out of the state and federal governments, aren't going to last. You know, over the next maybe two years at most, and. This is one where if we can get some funding in that period, it'll be gold. Um, so the tricky thing is converting that into a um, you know, shovel-ready mm. project, so to speak. We had to do it in a bit of a hurry to get we that did. first one from um, promoted to Kinko, uh, promoted to Koran, ready. So yeah. whether over coming, whether that stakeholder group sort of identifies which is the next priorities, and we, we continue to work up those shovel-ready yeah. components of the project. Yeah. So we can, that's definitely the intention yeah. because there's a hot, there's a wide range of opportunities in that master yeah. plan, and this group will need to help us kind of just bring it down to the next level and help yeah. prioritise those. Um, but yes, you're right, Brett, that we weren't successful in the tourism infrastructure mm -hmm. funding, unfortunately. Um, so there's currently, you know, the, the master plan's not funded. Yeah. So we'll just continue to to, to work on developing it and look for opportunities. Developing it is you, you want to you want to push it through, but at the same time you want to you have to community engagement, and so those and then as you said, the more community engagement there is, when you go to the state, the more higher probability of getting funding. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that that that's an interesting equation, isn't it? Like that's time. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's time. It's effort. It's a lot of people sitting around taking notes and you know raising issues, and of course no. Few, few people would agree, you know, 100% on anything, so it's a matter of getting con uh, the, the majority of, of a view of a particular group or... The, the purpose of the community, of, this, of the sort of um, stakeholder group for the Trials Master Plan is really to, to take the master plan concepts and ideas to another level. You know, they need, they need to be taken, so some of them are ideas, you know, a new route between um, Tewantan and Lake Macdonald. Yeah. You know, that needs unpacking. Yeah. Where, what does that look like? What sort of facilities? Who does it service? Is it is it walkers, runners, trail bikers, horses? You know, so it needs it needs those who use the trail and, and understand the network and there's a yeah. heap of people and, and groups to help sort of unpack some of those higher level opportunities. Yeah. Um so that's what this group's about. It this is this group's not, you know, to redo the master plan or look yeah. at a range because the master plan is pretty comprehensive in terms yeah. of the whole network. Um, it's it's definitely about going okay. Well, what does that what does that new trail look like? Or if we're going to do the um, upgrade to um, Pomona and Coran, to what level and to what facilities and you know what uh, what cultural opportunities are there? You know where where are some stop points and some shade points? You know those sorts of things based on who, who uses those the network. So it's really about the, the, the finer grain detail to get each of those pro, um, projects to a shovel ready a shovel so that we are ready to go and, if, the and then get the funding. There's so. a lot of vision. The more clear vision, the better for what it actually is going to look like. Absolutely. And yeah. then it, it, it seems that um, the, the, the people that would be mostly using it, as far as numbers go, are actually visitors coming in. Is, is there... Um, a national bike clubs or, or you know, a, a Brisbane well, I bike think club? you are challenge that. I think you'll find that there's an extraordinary number of residents who use the trail both for biking, horse riding and, and walking. In fact, our yeah, at Sport and Act, Active Recreation Strategy showed that I think it's number one in terms of the survey they did in terms of outdoor recreation. Um, really? Yeah, the, and very different to the national and Queensland figures yeah. locally is the people who are using our, our trails for walking and bike riding. So yeah, there are a lot of people who come, you know. Yeah. yeah. I'm guessing over a hundred thousand people a year these days in the Waroi trails. Yeah. Um, it yeah. was seventy thousand a couple of years ago. So. Yeah, that would be correct. The one of the objectives of the master plan is to increase 
you know, the, the uh, appeal of the hinterland opportunities for tourists. So, yeah. you know, that's why working in partnership with Tourism oh. Noosa was really yeah. important for this. You yeah. know, so people are aware of the incredible asset that's out there. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that yeah. working group's probably got to look at two things. One is how do you get visitors and then how do you convert that into economic benefit into the promoters and the creators yeah. and places yeah. into like the that. towns. And the second is what's the overall prioritisation of what's in the master plan? Yeah. Because you know, there's a lot in there. You're not going to do it all at once. You know, you do the promoter to Karan first, and you do Lake Belmont or promoter second. Or, you know, how do you how do you sort of work out what would be the logical development sequence yeah. in terms of achieving that that overall plan and getting the value for money? So that's probably the other element that group yeah. looking at. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 When you get the high class trails, it might be overnight or even a good long one day one, like in uh, the recent opening. There was a one down in Tasmania. Then the micro scale businesses start up, which they're giving you the ride to the lift to the top of the hill. They're meeting you halfway for lunch with the local gourmet food. Mm. They're picking up the end where you get the oysters and the wine. Mm. Stay it's all there. Very healthy. Mm. Um, <laughs> or, or, <laughs> yeah, well, the Alps to Ocean in New Zealand, where it's a seven or six six day ride. And you're you know, you're linking up the bed and breakfast. You're seeing whole old towns where the pub was closed for a decade reopening and having modern restaurants and accommodation upstairs, all as a result of people wanting to go on these long yep. rides, whether it's downhill mountain biking or just gravel road riding or whatever. Yeah. No, that's, that's very exciting. But the the parking, because Grant, you brought that up. We were talking about that. You know, even with Brian O'Connor staying, you know, in front of the uh, uh, Matt Corral. Pomona? Yeah, Pomona. Yeah, in, in, in the parking situation yeah. there in Pomona, and we were saying, gosh, you know, what about for the Majestic Theater, you know, that area yeah. for the for the bikers? But I think that parking is obviously a big deal, but that's for the, yeah. the committee to talk about, not, yeah. not us. So. Yeah, they're the sorts of things that need to be looked at, the facilities there at Trailhead, you know, and parking, all of those things. Toilets. I, um, I had a thought actually just before in terms of Brett talking about being prepared for shovel ready. And one is for the big picture stuff, for the enhancement of the trail to become a destination mm. or an experience of national standard. Mm. The other one we know is correct is that many of these were slashed as horse trails come rough walking tracks and they're not fit for purpose for. And so I'm thinking that what might be useful is actually having to think what a crowd sourcing type citizen science project of developing a, a template to record sections of the track, you might say. This section is steep, it's starting to erode here, it might have a dangerous corner or whatever, and actually have a, a online um, citizen science audit program. That was actually part of the yeah. master plan, I did that. Too. Yeah, People, they there's did. lots of information. Too. But that would have been months ago. two years or more ago, I think. Yeah. Less than that. Would have been last yeah, year. probably about 18 oh. months ago. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But yeah, it might be something to build yeah. on there. Right? Yep. Yeah, I've got some stuff in yeah. there. Yeah. I did too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Between yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> there's, so, there's so much, there's a wealth of information that's mm. been input into that. Yeah. But yeah, to keep that current and keep and that yeah, going. And yeah, so like, you know, if we do have, like I know we did put some, I think we did have some money in the um, first round of, of stimulus package projects, which was about the Noosa Trail upgrade or what had the opportunity to be applied to some of the new trail no or was that just no. one of the suggestions for the environmental the stuff it yeah. was yeah. 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 Okay. it's not funded okay yeah. council stop can i go back to i think i missed one just the fuel, fuel, fuel reduction 2021 program it was just above in the bushland trial. reserve management yeah yes. sorry i missed it at the top of the page there kim where are we at with all of that there's actually a report coming to the general committee providing a um, thorough update on the, on the fire management plan. So you'll get that next week. Terrific. Claire, Great. a whole lot of detail in that. Thank you. Okay. Coastal hazards adaptation plan. Polar Shire climate change adaptation plan. Business as usual activities. Local economic plan. Oh. The COVID safe business support and monitoring, you know, what what um, Tourism News did with, with proposed to do in, in uh, with, with most, I think, the Hastings Street businesses, but for all the um, tourist businesses, especially the restaurants, they had that guy from Sunshine Beach, the absolute expert. Dr. Ian Dr. Norton. Norton. Yeah, Dr. Yep. Ian. How did that go? Oh, I think that went fantastically. That really well. Yeah, yeah, really well attended. Um, a hot, yeah, they've developed a whole range of um, 
resources and, and, and videos, little snippet videos of, you know, how to clean a table in a restaurant or how to manage a reception area. So, and they're sharing all of those resources. They've got little flashcards yeah, with some great. tips. It, it went, um, yeah, it's, it's been really successful. And we also had environmental health officers door the door knocking to provide follow-up and doing what they can to support on the ground as well. So they walked through every precinct, yep. visited every shop. Well, isn't that great? I so, but again, this is so proactive in that way. I mean, just really taking it on, even though people say, oh, you know, there's not going to be a second wave, we've got this covered, you know, no. And all of a sudden, because of that actions, we're probably ahead of the, the game. So if anybody says, all oh, these two girls at the Civic, you know, you know, COVID's going to be rampant here, we can actually pull back and say, well, no, this is the program, it's already been in place. And, um, and, and we've got the world's best guy, Ian leading the charge for Noosa and he's on the pay, you know, obviously he's been paid. I, I think that that was part of yeah, the issues the, was, are we going to pay him? The yeah. business associations paid for that. Yeah, not yeah. us, but the, yeah. yeah. Well, that not that great? Okay, I just wanted to, in okay. case anybody's watching that. <laughs> I think one of the most interesting things in my mind over the last couple of weeks has been um, the positive attitude of our local businesses and how we've sort of, the mindset has moved a little bit. If I go back a couple of months, it was very much the message to council was help us with education, help us with support, help us with information, all that sort of stuff, and, and take, you know, put the stick away. We're here to help. Yeah. And that sort of flowed through into the parking, into health issues. Over the last couple of weeks, the businesses realised, and particularly the good businesses realised, that if someone is a business and they're not performing well, they'll let everyone else down. They've actually said to council, you might need to get the stick out for those that aren't yeah. doing the right thing and make sure that not everyone is affected then. Make sure that the people who aren't taking it seriously do take it seriously, otherwise we're all affected. And that's been one of the really interesting mind shifts for me over this last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And it's the right one, by the way. Yeah. Because it is the weakest link of the chain for us now. Yeah. yeah. People realise that. So yeah. yeah. And I think the business roundtable has been just crucial yep. in, in that. And the, the way the business associations have been have engaged in that and, you know, generously shared information and resources and issues. And, you know, I think that's been a really yeah, been wonderful. A fabulous process. Wasn't Nisa the first one to implement the, a, a business roundtable? situation like that? I read that someplace. Well, that's that's the feedback we've got from various sort of state departments because we engaged every level of government at our at our round table from day one. So we had representatives from federal government through the Regional Development Australia um, group. We had uh, two state representatives there, including the current Small Business Commissioner, Marie Adshed. She's been there from day one. Um, and of course, Sandy Bolton um, and Claire. Um, so we had every level of government there. So from a from a early on in the piece, where the businesses were sort of navigating the regulation, the changing government requirements, it was a direct line to state and federal government for them at the table, um, and that was incredibly helpful. And the state uh, and federal representatives have said that that influenced policy and and and, um, and actions coming from both state and federal level. So. You know, I think it's it's from an advocacy perspective and um, information sharing was you know had the right people at the table and that sounds like yeah. sounds like a good um, article for the local government newspaper for Andy to mention. Yeah, <laughs> that's the kind of thing that the newspaper that, that we get you know mm -hmm. talks about business support and development. Is there any more there? Industry and sector development. Communications and marketing program, leadership and strategy program, business as usual, development assessment, okay, what's been the, um, since the planning scheme adopted, what's been the change in application numbers? Did we get a burst just before, a burst just after, or what happened? We did. Yeah. Happen, yeah, yeah. So we got uh, the Thursday Thursday night before the planning scheme came in, we got a, a little spike in applications. You know, maybe a dozen. Yep. Um, um, and then Friday morning, we got a, a number of applications too, where people were waiting for things, particularly like the dwelling bonus provisions. Mm. You know, where it allows them to get another dwelling on their site or something because of the small 
Um, so yeah, a little a little run at the end and a and a, okay. and, a and a little burst afterwards. Okay. Auditing program for advertising devices. So continue it. So we so we put the temporary hold. We're we going back to recommencing the audit in the next quarter. Is that what we? Um, look, we're still providing advice out there, but taking a pretty soft approach, to be honest, Brian, in the current environment. Um, and I think we will continue that. What would be the trigger for us to revisit that soft approach? Uh, look, I think we're, you know, when we've got a really good sense that, you know, people, you know, all businesses are reopened and, you know, people we're needing, using extra signage and things like that to say we're back in business or we're doing something different to what we were doing before in response to COVID and um, or something new's popped up or we've diversified or something. So, you know, we absolutely allowed some a whole lot of flexibility around that. Um, but, you know, again, if there's new signage, like we've got new applications, we're, we're, we are requiring compliance. Um, but it's, it's I guess it's just the, the, the time frame to give people the opportunity to change their signage if they have to um, over, over the next, you know, we've, we've probably said till the end of the year. But we'll, we'll, we'll revisit that in the context yeah. of where, oh, the, yeah. where the economy's at and where... At the, yeah. at the meet the council, I had one where we'd... We'd done some compliance action just before the audit. Yep. And immediately across the, this was a community group and immediately across the road is some others which are probably not, they're old, but they're probably also uh, suitable for compliance action. And yeah. you're saying, well, how come, how come we have to do it and they don't? And that's, that's the only thing that I was thinking of. We have to be seen. And I think most people understand we're trying to um, uh, help businesses through a very difficult time. Yeah, so just have to be that's it. And you know, where there, if there are health and safety concerns, like signs are in places where people can trip and things like that, we're dealing with those. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. All good. Um, plumbing and building audit educational programs, swimming pool immersions, compliance approvals, council and community, electronic plumbing application project. The end. All good? Well, before you close the meeting, keep back from the councillors about the format of the report. We've just really got some time here. What do people think? Is, this, is the information useful? Is the format exactly better? Um, what works for you and what doesn't? I think, yeah, I think the format's good. Um, I wouldn't mind some KPIs and also this is where we should be, this is where we're at. You know, so to just look almost like a time frame or we're behind here. Um, you know, I think capital infrastructure, some of their things they have, you know, across behind time, ahead of time. So maybe in regard to that, if we're on track time-wise, that would be helpful as well. And maybe some KPIs. I remember uh, the chair of our audit committee, Scott Williams, once said to me in an audit committee, he said, Brett, there's nothing interesting in good news. All the interesting stuff's in the bad news. Yeah, <laughs> so we can find this on one. Yeah. That's yeah. Really, and, and that's true, you know, yeah. we, we tend to probably put up stuff that shows that good luck. You know, what, where's the value added for the council? So if we've got a problem here, how can we solve yeah. it? We, we, do, we need to think about how that reports with our operational plan reporting mm. quarterly because that does that behind schedule yeah. on track not yeah. so it's yeah, about how we bring those here. together yep. yeah. yeah I'm still strongly of the view that this is far too operational um, that I want to know what did we say we were going to achieve when did we say we we're going to achieve it and are we on a path to get to there um, so I think it should be very much we go look through all our strategies and plan and say what are the outcomes what are our activities and processes heading there? Is the way we're currently doing it achieving that? And so, we, to me, it's a really, I have no problem with this sort of information being available as an attachment because it's very processy, but I, for one, don't need to know that the advice that lighting towers in Taunton Sports Complex or that the plumbing approval by Centennial Hall is not telling me whether we're doing a good job as councils providing sporting facilities for the growing. Um, demographic or so, you know, whatever our active recreation and, and sports plans are, and that's really what's more important. And then we have to, because this is a monthly thing, we then have to say, well, which of those are a quarterly thing, which of those are appropriate to report on, on a quarterly basis? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you know? yeah, some of those long term things, it's yeah. probably an annual basis. Yeah. Yeah. So you might say, here's, yeah. here's, the, here's the desired outcome, this is the impact we want to achieve this year, and, you know, are we? Tracking. Tracking towards, in on a quarterly basis yeah. towards that, that impact. Yep. 
So this is this is a quarterly thing. Yes. Mm. I, to be honest, I was going to actually do the exact opposite. <laughs> you actually put names down so that I could start associating names and you know with what with what's actually happening here to get more across the you know who's doing what. I, maybe that's not the counselor's job. Maybe that's too micromanagement. But yeah, it, it is a bit, Tom. So. Okay. Um, Question more is, you know, if you then want a question about something, you can yeah. talk to Kim and she can say, well, you need to talk to Alan mm -hmm. yeah. Basil or Kerry Contini or whatever okay. it might be. So. Okay, maybe that's too much. But I, yeah. I, I like it because it gives it just giving me more insight as to what's happening here. Claire, your thoughts? Yeah, you no, I think. Yeah, look. Um, stuff, yeah, yeah I, I understand the value of the detail too, Tom. I mean, I think for new councillors, it is helpful to get it. There's so much. Yeah. You know, there's, there's such a, a broad, you know, sort of dimensions to what council does. So it's certainly helpful in that respect. Um, Brian, I also take on board what you're saying as well. I said the big thing for me would be the KPIs and, mm. um, you know, what, what, what are we do, what, why? You know, why are yeah. we doing this and, and how's it, and, and I guess that are we on target, are we not? And okay, and let's focus on the ones we're not and why. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's more of a what do we need it? Is it community focused? What's happening? And that sort of thing. So probably mm. including some sort of measurable yeah. efficiency, effectiveness, impact. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Thank, thank so, you. So, would someone like to move the staff recommendation? Sure. <laughs> Moved by Council Stewart, seconded by Council Wagner. All in favour? Got the hand up, Councillor Pinzel. Carried unanimously. And the meeting is closed at 10.32.